Let me guess, you're in the mood to talk about OTC and penny stocks. Good timing, so am I. I'm John Zadar, I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday, February 6th. Now we do have a passion on this show of focusing in on hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for those stocks that have potential. We're not looking at runners. We're not going to be looking at stocks that had buku games today. They've already taken off. You don't get anywhere watching a plane fly away. You got to be on the plane before it takes off if you want to get anywhere, right? So we're looking at stocks that have not taken off yet. We're looking at the charts. We're looking for setup, some heat down there, something that looks like it's ready to take off if there was a match to light it. So I go looking for that match lingering news. I'm looking for a filing or a press release that came out a month or two months ago that talks about something that's going to happen a couple weeks or a month from now so I can get on that plane and get a seat before it takes off, right? So those are the type of stocks we're looking at and they're all penny stocks. That means they're all under five bucks regardless of what market they're on. The OTC, the major exchange, doesn't matter what market they're on. As long as they're under five bucks, they qualify. They are penny stocks. Now, I like to trade those major exchange stocks. There's a lot of benefits. No transaction fees. They're free to trade. You can trade pre-market, aftermarket, get those gains. And of course, the stocks upon the major exchanges have better reputations. They get more attention from investors that have money. So I'm fond of trading penny stocks on the major exchange, but I like to trade the OTC even with their downfalls because there's a lot of opportunities down there. Not to mention, they are the cheapest shares you're going to buy anywhere. Do you know that the cheapest share you can buy goes for 0.0001 cents? That is equivalent to a million shares for 100 bucks. Talk about getting the most out of your dollar, the most out of your penny. Wow. So yeah, I like to trade both, major exchange and OTC. And when I do my research on the OTC stocks, this without a doubt is where I go 100% of the time, the otcmarkets.com website. Folks, this is the only site, I'm gonna say that again, this is the only site on the internet that the SEC and FINRA update every single day for every single OTC stock. Yeah, they do it for a lot of sites for the major exchange stocks, but not for OTC. This site was set up specifically for OTC investors. You can see they haven't put a lot of style or uh, colors to it. They don't care if you hang around. They're not trying to keep people coming here. It's just a place to get up-to-date current information without any hype. It's for us. And you know all that news you see over there? I get it here. Not one stitch of news do I get anywhere else from this site because it is updated constantly, not just at the end of the day, all through the day. So if you're doing your research on OTC stocks anywhere else but here, at least initially starting here, you're frustrating the heck out of yourself. You're wasting a lot of time. I swear to God, folks, start here. You will thank me later. All right, how did our OTC market finish today? God, I hope it's better than that. Let's give her a bump and a jump. Got a little bit, not much. Everything is still below where we would like to see it. We're at $1.7 billion volume today. We'd like to be up at 2, 2.1. We just haven't been there in a very long time. That used to be our average. Share volume, we need to be at 10 billion. Honestly, I can tell you, every time we hit 10 billion shares, you can see the market go into second gear. It's definitely a different market. Right now, we're only 50% of that, and it feels like it. Trades, as always, we're stuck between 250 and 300,000 shares. I don't know how long that's been. Five, six months, it's been so long, I have forgotten. Thank goodness, though, there are individual stocks that run contrary to the market sentiment. And I've got some I think are ready to pop. You wanna see what I got for you? Of course you do, that's why you stopped in, right? <laughs> All right, let's go see. Let's get this treasure hunt started by looking at a warrant attached to a SPAC. Now, if you've been watching my shows here recently, we've been talking a lot about these. And with good cause, they're making great gains. And the best thing about it is there's lots of opportunities. There's lots of SPACs doing things out there. Now, I'm not going to go into too many details about what a SPAC and a warrant is, but I will tell you I've got two videos out there that cover all of this and the opportunity and how you can make bank playing these warrants attached to SPACs. These just came out a couple weeks ago, so the information is going to be all current. Now, I will say this much. The SPAC's common stock 
it is going for ten dollars a share that's what you buy them for and they are only worth ten dollars until the blank check company consummates and closes a deal so if they are in merger talks or signing a letter of intent the stock can't move because that's not closing a deal that's just talks and signing so by default it is the warrant the penny stock that gets all the attention and these are running 50 100 percent 200 500 a thousand percent gains over and over again so there's lots of money to be made here so we're looking at the SPAC new Vista acquisition core the warrants ticker is NVSAW finished today just a little over nine cents 0 0.092 with about 18 percent gains now like 99.9% .9 of all warrants, she's on the major exchange. She is on the NASDAQ, which means you can trade this pre-market after market. And there are lots of gains in the pre-market. I see when news comes out, these things run. You do have to be up a little bit earlier, but you can get in there. You don't need any special permissions or special qualifications. The only piece of advice you need, change the time period on your order. You can't purchase a day order in extended periods. It has to say day plus extension or good till canceled plus extension. Other than that, get in there, make some money. So this company had news come out at the beginning of the month. New Vista Acquisition Corps signs non-binding letter of intent for business combination. They're not closing, right? So it isn't gonna be the stock that moves, it's gonna be the warrant. Let's take a look at this news. They tell us here that the company today announced that it has entered into a non-binding letter of intent for a business combination, a merger, with Verajet Holding Company. Verajet provides customers with private aviation services as the largest fleet operator of Cirrus Vision jets, operating 19 jets in the Northeast, Southeast, and West Coast. The Cirrus Vision jet is winner of the 2017 Collier Trophy for the greatest achievements in aeronautics. I don't know what that's about. Currently, they are the only single-engine turbofan aircraft widely available in the private aviation marketplace. Additionally, the Cirrus Vision Jet has important safety features as a turbofan-powered aircraft with a full aircraft parachute, as well as a Garmin Auto Land which autonomously lands the plane with the push of a single button if a pilot is unable to fly, allowing it to be operated safely with a single pilot. New Vista expects to provide additional details regarding the potential business combination with Verajet only if and when a definitive agreement is executed. Now there's one piece of information that they didn't give you here, which is crucial. I'm going to jump back to that news right there. The ex-CEO of Boeing, owns this SPAC. It's his SPAC, and that's what happens. The SPAC owners normally have skill sets to help whatever business they're gonna do a merger with. So here we have the ex-CEO of Boeing with a SPAC who is merging with a jet company. Sounds like a successful blend to me. And this news just came out, right? This is just at the beginning of the month. It's a little late, we could have been faster on it, I understand, but not a lot of people have been looking at this right yet. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what opportunity awaits us. Looking at the SPAC New Vista Acquisition, ticker NVSAW. We're going to be doing our charting on the free trading platform that TD Ameritrade gives you for free just for signing up for their free trading account. This is Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim, these are my viewers. All right, now that we got those formalities out of the way, we are looking at a one-day, one-year chart for NVSAW. About a year ago, she was at 50 cents, and in November, she hit a low just above 2 cents. And she has been below that 200 the entire time. Let's come down to our six-month, four-hour view. All right, at least here she's tagging that 200 a few times, and right now she is beating the heck out of it. We had a nice jump back here in August of 300% from 11 cents to 33, and would you believe that that bar is over 400% gains? It is. That is from about 4 cents up to 17 something cents. So that smaller bar is worth more than that bigger bar. It's not the size of the bar. That matters. It's about position. Where is it on the chart? The lower you go on the chart, the smaller that bar has to be to get those big gains. And as I said right now, she is pulverizing that 200-day SMA. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight times she has hit it in four days. Not a lot of volume, but a lot of determination. I'll give it that. Our RSI is climbing. It's now over 55 at 57. Our MACD has had a bounce off of her line and is pushing up. Our PPO is pushing up. Everything is looking good right now on the four hour chart. Let's take a look at our 20 day one hour. Well, not a whole lot going on all this time. She was under the 200 just floating on her 50. And then here at the last day of January, she popped, popped real strong, busted through that 200, fell back to her 50 and then jumped onto the 200. And it's pretty much been sitting up there all this time. She has put a foot down on top of that 50 day SMA to stabilize herself, but she has stayed up there. Today, she had a nice jump. She jumped from about seven and a half cents to 12 and a half cents. You're looking at about 80% gains there before she came down. And this is kind of nice. We don't want it to climb, climb, climb yet, right? We want to get a good price in. Our PPO is going up. Our MACD is climbing still. Our RSI is cooling off just a wee bit. Now what I notice here, I just seen our 20 day SMA, the orange line, has crossed the 200. It has gone underneath our price. So now we've got two SMAs underneath our price. So if she breaks the nine day SMA, she doesn't have to come all the way down to that 200 like she did before. She can start bouncing off of that 20. She's got more support underneath her right now. And our five day, five minute. All right, I'm gonna grab my recession channel here. I wanna show you what is going on right there. I'm going to just poke it right there. You can poke it anywhere you want, actually, and just drag this out. This shows us the bottom and the top where, where she's bouncing the most. And right in the middle, you've got a 50% mark showing you the halfway point. And you can see she's broken out of this a couple times, including today, and she keeps coming back into the channel. Right now, she is stuck on her 50% mark. That's not a bad place to be. We're looking for a good entry point. Now, you can never tell when these warrants are going to pop. The news came out a week ago. Did, did it pop a week ago? Uh, there's the 30th, the first. Uh, we had a pop and she came back down. Folks, these don't play by the rules. When they run, they run strong and you're gonna get yourself 50, 100, 200, 500% gains. Right now, she's showing incline. She is growing at a slow rate. She's showing signs of enthusiasm. You're getting some nice pops here. She's been outside of her channel a few times. In my opinion, this would be a good time to consider getting into this. Now, I'm only getting in with 50, maybe $100. That's it. And you're saying, why? If you can make money, why would you get in with so little? Well, the bottom line is most of these warrants don't get a lot of volume. Some only get 10,000 shares a day. You don't want to get stuck holding 20,000 shares when it's only doing 10,000 shares a day. You want to be able to multiply your money and then find another SPAC doing the same thing and do it again. Maybe buy three or four with your winnings and now have four SPACs that can go up four, five, six hundred percent gains. This is how you'll make your money. Lots of small gain plays. That's what I'm doing. I'm up to 13 SPACs right now and each one is growing slowly just like this. I had one breakout BBAI WS that was an AI stock it was not a SPAC but it was hot and it made me some money so NVSAW it's an early play it's an early play right now she's at a decent price there's not a whole lot more information I can share with you but the next piece of news that comes out I bet you she climbs next stock we're taking a look at is on the OTC market just your everyday average ordinary shares this is XTM Inc ticker XTMIF now they've had no new filings no new news however their last two news presses caught my attention lingering news and all right they had a news press come out in December about a deal they made to expand their services and they were going to launch it first quarter of 2023 that's right now then they had a news press come out first week of January saying business was growing and revenues were growing and you're going to see by what we look at that is the case so it looks to me like they are priming up for something and now would be a good time to consider this company. So XTMIF finished today at about 13 and a half cents with almost 9% gains. On the middle tier of the OTC, this is the QB, you have to audit your financials to be here. That simply makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. And they've got all the green ticks you could ask for here. Transfer agent verified, verified profile. I'm always telling you to look for those. 
And we've got a bonus. They are penny stock exempt. That is to say, they are not a penny stock. I know they're 13 cents on the OTC. How can that be? Because they've proven themselves to be reliable, not risky like a startup company. How did they do that? Well, the actual definition says that you have to have been in business for three to five years with millions of dollars of assets during that entire time period and not had any problems with your financial filings. They've ticked all the boxes. They look really good. So what can we learn about this company? Well, XTM is a Miami and Toronto based fintech innovator in the hospitality services space, helping businesses and service workers disseminate and access earned wages and gratuities. XTM's proprietary flagship product, the Today Solution, is comprised of a free mobile app and a Visa or MasterCard debit card with free banking and is being used by thousands of restaurants, salons, and staff across Canada and the United States. They also have a couple additional products which include tip pooling, Today Pay, and micro lending. So what was the relative volume today without a direct catalyst? Well, she probably needed that direct catalyst. <laughs> She's normally doing less than 50,000 shares a day. Ooh, today she dropped virtually 90% of her volume down to 6,000 shares. Definitely under the radar. Share structure. Oh, I forgot to look this one up and we can't do it because she's not a pink. I'm not believing that the float's gonna be in there. So I'm gonna go look this up on Google. Whatever I find, I'm gonna toss right up there for you. And if I don't find anything, I'll put three question marks so you know I didn't forget about you. Financials, well, let's see how they've been increasing. Here's 2021. Now remember, we gotta add three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. So in 2021, they did $1.8 million worth of business. Looking at 2022, we've got three quarters here, 1.9, 2.5, 2.6. In the first three quarters, they've already exceeded all the revenues for 2021. They're at 2.6 million, where 2021, they're at 1.8. And we got one more quarter to add on here. So yeah, the revenues are growing. Disclosures for the company, nothing. We got no Form 4s, 8Ks, 6Ks, nothing at all. So let's take a look at that news. Now we're only gonna look at the most recent news, the lingering news that I believe is gonna cause it to move. So we got two pieces of news here. That piece of news that came out in January, as I said, they were bragging about how business was growing and their revenues were growing. And then that news that came out in December, they tell us here that XTM, a Miami and Toronto-based fintech creator of disruptive payment innovations, specifically for service industries, including hospitality, personal care, and service staff, today announced an exclusive partnership with BookChain to deliver BookChain's workforce management platform to hospitality and professional service organizations for manufacturing and staffing sectors. This agreement represents the culmination of a multi-month negotiation and includes BookChain's reciprocal agreement to exclusively offer XTM's fintech platform for on-demand pay to BookChain's thousands of platform members in the healthcare industry in Canada, the United States, and Europe. XTM and BookChain have multiple joint installations ready to be deployed, and the first installation with breakaway staffing will roll out early Q1 2023. That's what we're looking at. You've got a new deal, they've got new products, they're reaching out to thousands of people, and it's happening right now. And the charts look warm, even though the volume is critically low right now. Let's go take a look at that chart. I'm actually liking this chart. This is ticker XTMIF, six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here of 24 cents and a low in the beginning of January before the news of the deal came out at about seven cents. And right now we're almost double that at 13 and a half cents. Now you can see she was running downhill all these six months, even under the 50, not just the 200. And it was that low bubble that has changed things. That put her on top of the 50 day SMA, not mightily, but she did get up there, rode back down and then just walked over the 50. No problem. And once she got even close to the 200, she pounced. Boink, got right up on top of there. Now I would expect for it to come back down and make a second attempt at it. But 
The technicals say she's not coming back down. Every single one of these is pushing up. All of them are hot right now. The only thing missing here is the volume. We have no volume today, 6,000, which isn't, you know, normal. Look at all the volume she normally gets. Today, she didn't get any, and still, she had a push. Let's look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Steady climbing. I'm going to grab my recession channel here, and I'm going to poke that low, drag it up, Oh, look at that. Beautiful. I'm going to extend that to the right here. So she's been inside that channel, crossed the 200 as she's been climbing. No big deal until she got on the other side. Look at the size of these price bars. Crossed our 50% mark, the halfway mark. No problem. Bounced off the ceiling, came down, hit the floor, and has bounced back up and is now climbing outside of our, our channel. This looks like she's ready for a breakout. Does it not? Look at our technicals. Everything is strong and pushing up. Every single one of them is pushing up. You cannot go wrong if your oscillators are all pointing up. Twenty, uh, five day, five minute. Still climbing. Everything is looking great. There's nothing more to be said here, folks, except that we've got a new SMA on the board. Mm. I noticed that the price gravitates to a new SMA. Now, maybe, maybe this drop here was it trying to get as close as it was going to get to that SMA before it went on with its own business. It wasn't going to come any deeper. Fingers crossed that's what that was. Outside of that, this chart looks great, folks. Looks like she is still on her way up. And our technicals, they agree with me. Our PPO is going up. Our ADX is going down. When you see the spread, you know the price is rising. Our MACD has had a bounce off. It is going up right now, and our RSI is at 65. I like XTMIF setup on the chart. Everything looks good. She's broke out over the 200 on the four hour. She's breaking out of this channel on the one hour and the five minute. I think something's gonna happen here. They just made a deal. They're launching right now. The revenues are growing. How does it look to you? Last stock we're taking a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker RGTI, Rigetti Computing. A very curious puppy, if I say so myself. She finished the day at $1.16 with almost 11% gains. Now, the company hasn't got any new filings or new news presses. However, they do have lingering news. And you find that lingering news by finding a warm chart which stimulated you to go find news. Well, this news came out in December. And when I read it, it blew my mind. They have got technology here that has never been seen before commercially. I've heard about this publicly, but not commercially. And I think this could be bigger than AI. And they would be a first mover on that front. So I'm thinking this is one to consider. And I'm going to show you what I found. So, what is this company all about? Well, this is where the fun begins. Rigetti is a pioneer in full stack quantum computing. The company has operated quantum computers over the cloud since 2017 and serves global enterprise, government, and research clients through its Rigetti Quantum Cloud Service Program. The company's proprietary quantum classical infrastructure provides high performance integration with public and private clouds for practical quantum computing. Oh boy. Rigetti has developed the industry's first multi-chip quantum processor for scalable quantum computing systems. Rigetti has more than 150 patents awarded and pending. Folks, quantum computing is not like regular computers. It's not even fair to call them computers. They're totally different. They're working with different sciences. Our computers, they work with a yes, no, left, right, up, down, on, off. That's it, this or that. That's all we get with our computers. These quantum computers have four states. They have that yes and no, but they also have a state where both yes and no exist at the same time. And I'm not going to be able to explain this to you because it really gets into quantum science. And the fourth one is even deeper than that, folks. I don't know how to explain it. It's got something to do with connecting two things that are separated from each other so that they each are in sync. <laughs> All I know is that this has never been used before with businesses. Now, you understand the AI, artificial intelligence, it's been hot here recently, especially with the um, introduction of uh, chat, GPT, and open AI. 
You've probably heard of them. Well, there's been a couple companies that have aligned with these and their stocks have been running. Well, ChatGPT and OpenAI are nothing but cloud services. They're cloud services that these big corporations are plugging into. They pay a subscription and they get so much data for what they pay. They're not having to buy the computers, bring on technicals, do a merger or an acquisition. They're just paying for a subscription and their stocks are running on that. Well, that's what they're doing. They've got quantum computing on cloud, which I cannot even fathom the benefits of what this can do. But if there was a beast, a, a competitor against AI, it would probably be quantum computing. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Oh, now there's an increase. We went from about 1 million to five and three quarter million. So there was a big jump today. Absolutely was. And that news that I'm talking about came out in December. I don't believe there's anything fresh today. I could be wrong. Uh, share structure. Doggone it. I got to look this one up too. All right. We got 123 million here. I'll see what I can find for the float. I wish I would do this ahead of time. Financials. RGTI, they've got nothing coming in in 2021 and money is starting to come in now. And it's starting to come in fast. You know, it started from zero and they're going 2 million, 2 million, 2 million. No, getting up to 3 million here. And they get to keep most of the money they're making. It doesn't cost them a lot. So they're starting to make revenues right now with what it is that they're doing. Disclosures, anything new over here? Uh, I think uh, these are about shares. Yeah, those are about shares of common stock that they are normally putting on the market. We got an 8K here on the 27th. What is this one about? Notice of delisting or failure to satisfy. Right. They didn't meet the minimum bid price requirement of a dollar. Now they're starting to do it. You've got to be over a dollar. By the end of the day, you have to close over a dollar for 10 days straight to get out of that hot water. Right now, they're working their way out of it. So we do have that concern. Was there anything else we really needed to see there? No, not really. All right. And the last thing is the news. And the news is carrying everything we need. Uh, this is a variety of news down here. I've grabbed what we need and got that right here. Mm, which one is it? Not that one, not that one. That's what you get for opening up new windows. This one. So this came out December 6th. Rigetti to bring quantum machine learning applications to StrangeWorks platform. The new applications are expected to be available on a StrangeWorks platform in early 2023 on a pay-as-you-go service. StrangeWorks Inc. and Rigetti today announced StrangeWorks commitment to make available on its platform two new quantum machine learning applications from Rigetti. These QML applications are expected to initially be available exclusively on the straight work platform in early 2023. And that's really all I got. Oh, I got a little more here. Um, StrangeWorks is a group of experienced serial entrepreneurs, enterprise software developers, and quantum physicists <laughs> who seek to humanize quantum computing and make it accessible to everyone. And I've already told you what Rigetti is. So I really can't give you a lot of information here, folks, except to tell you that quantum computers are something completely different than regular computers. That's like calling a rhinoceros a dog. I mean, they're just two totally separate breeds. They each have tails and four legs, but no, they're not the same. And quantum computing can do so much more than regular computers. AIs are working with regular computers. <laughs> put an AI with quantum, I don't want to even think about it. That would make Terminator look like uh, Mother Goose. All right, so you can see how excited I am about this. It's first mover advantage. They don't have any new news as far as I could see because she did have a jump today in volume. Uh, that's the 24th. No, uh, management change to drive growth. So they've had some management change, but that's it. Unless there's some article out there, and I'll tell you what, a good article written by somebody like Wall Street Journal or Bloomberg or something like that, whoo, that will get the stock running. Let's go take a look at this warm chart that I found. It has been a very long cascade. RGTI, six month, four hour. She was up here at $9.52 six months ago. 
and she fell all the way down to 67 cents here at the end of December. She's been under the 200 with a few very weak attempts to try to get over it, but right now she is doing it, and the volume has increased very strong right now without any catalyst. Maybe there's a tweet out there, or maybe there is an article, but from what we saw, there's nothing going on right now, and the volume is growing very fast. She came out from underneath all of her SMA. She was under the nine, and you can't climb until you get on top of the nine. Boink, once she got on top, she started working it, had to fall back here, hitting her head on that 50, and then took off. Didn't even slow down for that 200. That is a lot of strength. That's a lot of power, and you can see it. Look at those technicals. Everything looks like a mountain, right? Everything looks beautiful. Everything is hot. 20 day, one hour view. So she was under the 200, got a nice leap here. She jumped from 79 cents up to $1.05. You're looking at uh, over 50% run right there. Came back down, crushed that 200, stayed down there for quite a few days, has been wrestling it. Staying near the 50 day. She is staying very close to the 50 and that's where she launched from right there. You can see she put that foot down and kicked, pushed herself right off of there and she's sitting beautifully on her nine day SMA right now, not even falling. She had one, one bar here set close to touch the 20 but never touched it, holding on to her nine day. Everything still looks good here. Technicals do look like they're cooling off right now and that's, it's, it's almost like a, uh, it's, it's weird because our MACD is falling and that is going up. Arbitrage there, huh? Yeah, we've got it going the wrong direction. So things are definitely looking good on the chart, but very curious down here on our oscillators. They are all actually pushing down right now. Let's look at that five day, five minute. Maybe that'll make things more clear. Okay. So we had a lot of activity after market. She went way up, came down, up again, and then down very, very hard. And that's why our oscillators over there were showing all of this up and down motion in such a short amount of time here. But she was above her 200 all this time. She has wrestled with it right here and it doesn't look like she wants to come under it. She looks like she's staying up there. Our 200 is right there. She's wrestling with the 50 day right now. The technicals <laughs> keep arguing with me. The technicals keep disagreeing with my chart analysis. They say it's falling. They say it's still continuing. That doesn't mean the very next bar couldn't bounce. And that's the way it kind of looks to me. Looks like there's a lot of bouncing going on right now with a lot of respect to this 200 day SMA. Let's see, let's go back. Yeah, 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 you see there? She's respecting that all the way back until when was this? That, that was the first day of the month. Once she got up above that 200, she has not come down once, not once. So that, okay, there's once. Ah, ha, ha, somebody caught me. See, I don't want to be a liar, but my point is she's not coming under and staying under. She's breaking, she's poking, but that's it. This was the worst she's done right there. So I like the way this chart is looking and being a first mover with something brand new like quantum computing in the cloud, folks, you just can't imagine how big that might be. And it could catch on. We could see companies doing this and all of a sudden everybody realizes this company has an advantage because they're using the quantum computing. Forget AI, that's yesterday's tech. This is quantum, this is tomorrow's. Honestly, you're gonna have to do more research and I'll tell you what, if you go watch a YouTube video, there's a guy that gives a, a, a lecture about the quantum D-wave. D-Wave was the very first one, and it will blow you my, your mind, folks, because they actually talk about it has the ability to open up doors into other dimensions. And uh, five years ago, they had tapped into 512 new dimensions. I just blew your mind, didn't I? You never know what you're going to learn on this show. <laughs> All right, that's everything I got for you, folks. So we got a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Warrants, ordinary shares, quantum computing. Oh, I know I got off base there. That quantum computing just makes my brain race. You just can't believe the thoughts and the stuff I've read and looked at. Oh my God. In either case, folks, we've got some interesting stocks there. A fresh warrant that is just coming out right now with a deal. Lots of reasons for that warrant to bounce. And what was that other stock we were looking at? Uh, XTMIF. This is the company that is 
now expanding their launch is going on right now charts look good on that one and then of course you got quantum i don't know what to think about quantum i don't know what anyone else is going to think about quantum but if it catches fire this is going to be the company that launches and the charts look good don't they remember folks looking at charts it's an easy way to find a stock that's going to break out judging the news for a breakout won't always do it but a chart never lies remember the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.